settled science, they say. Well, looking at the published research regarding a scientific consensus in climate change, there is an apparent agreement on the human contribution to the ongoing change. But in what degree, that is still up for grabs. According to the study made by John Cook in 2013, only a handful of published papers held human contribution at a level of over 50%. This fact is fairly noted amongst the scientifically literate, but in media this often gets skewed. Critique against IPCC's climate models is common, as to this day there haven't been successful, accurate predictions by the majority of the models. The latest critique comes from Finland. Professors Emeriti, Pertti Sarkomaa and Seppo Ruottu, with a combined expertise in technical thermodynamics, heat transfer, combustion and energy economics, have written a report based on their research of carbon dioxide influences on the global climate. And the critique is quite harsh. In the introduction of the document they start with pointing out that IPCC does not guarantee correctness of its claims and by a disclaimer on their website they transfer all responsibility of all implementations of its claims to the implementing governments. In their document Sarkoma and Ruotu state that changes in the climate can't be temporarily predicted because of the many unpredictable factors and because of physical and numerical inaccuracies in the climate models. However, they reason that variables like carbon dioxide can be estimated properly by applying thermostatics and dynamics. Sarkoma and Ruattu criticizes IPCC's claim of a disastrous global warming due to increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. They state, the basic claim is based on calculations by climate models which apply hypothetical and heuristic quantities like climate sensitivity, clear sky radiative forcing and cloud feedback. They continue, these quantities prove univocally that the more than 6,000 authors of the IPCC's assessment reports don't understand mathematical theory of compound, momentum, energy and radiative transfer. The mathematical theory of compound, momentum, energy and radiative transfer doesn't know, need or allow hypothetical or heuristic quantities, hence their use in climate models of IPCC's assessment reports is as such a fatal error. So, the cloud feedback is erroneous according to Sarkoma and Ruattu. They say that in spite of tens of years of research, even the sign that is positive or negative, of cloud feedback is uncertain. They say that cloud feedback doesn't exist, but clouds have crucial influence on global mean temperatures via their contributions on spectral linear radiation coefficients of the atmosphere. If all linear radiation coefficients of clouds are set to zero, the Sarkoma Ruattu climate model, which they present in their document of Appendix 4, calculates about 100 watts per square meter increase of solar energy flux to the ground and about 13 degrees Celsius increase of the mean temperature of the ground. This agrees with the generally known fact that when a cloud comes in front of the sun, temperature decreases. Thus, IPCC's climate change claim should be based on calculations with negative instead of positive cloud feedbacks. Accordingly, IPCC's climate change claim is based on calculations by erroneous models and even by sign erroneous value of their cloud feedback. The duo has sent the report for review, among others to the IPCC Secretariat, all Finnish universities, WMO Secretary General Petteri Taalas, Citra, and Finnish Meteorological Institute and the Finnish Climate Panel. The authors have received feedback from academic professor, professor of meteorology in Helsinki University, Timo Vesala, and scientific director of the Finnish Meteorological Institute, professor Ari Laaksonen. Vesala's feedback was that he didn't have the readiness to review the report as such. With Laaksonen, who categorically defended IPCC's climate models, a dispute by emails took place. 
The full report of Sarkoma and Ruotto is quite a technical read of 92 pages, but worth it. But here I will present a summary of the errors they point out. Number 1. Mathematical starting point of the IPCC's climate models is wrong. Validity of 3D time-dependent climate models for studying the influence of carbon dioxide on global mean temperatures would demand that instant and local velocities, compound compositions, temperatures and number densities of gas, droplets and particles everywhere in the atmosphere could be forecasted precisely for tens of years. This isn't and will never be possible. Number 2. The models are thermostatically and dynamically wrong. Valid mathematical models of all chemical and physical processes and natural phenomenon must be based on thermostatics, thermodynamic transfer equations of compounds, momentum and energy, balance axiom, on element, compound, momentum, energy and number balances equations of all entities of the system and their initial and boundary conditions. IPCC's climate models don't fulfill any of these conditions. Influence of carbon dioxide concentration on global mean temperature must be studied by calculating global mean temperatures as functions of carbon dioxide concentrations, keeping all other initial and boundary conditions the same. In IPCC's climate models this isn't possible because influence of carbon dioxide depends on arbitrary choice of heuristic cloud feedback. Number 3. Temperature differences between gas and droplets have been neglected. Error 3 proves that makers of IPCC's climate models don't understand thermostatics or dynamics. According to the first law of thermostatics, condensation on droplet obligates energy flow between gas and droplet. According to the second law of thermostatics, energy flow between gas and droplet obligates temperature difference between gas and droplet. Accordingly, when water condensates on droplet or vaporizes from droplet, there must be temperature difference between gas and droplet. From error 3 follows that in IPCC's climate models, Cloudiness must be calculated by heuristic and erroneous correlations. Cloudiness dominates atmospheric radiation whereupon error 3 leads to entirely erroneous global mean temperatures. Number 4. Cloud feedback. According to meteorologist, cloud feedback is the coupling between cloudiness and surface air temperature, where surface air temperature change leads to a change in clouds. That is, cloudiness and surface air temperature are arguments of each other. If this were true, change of cloudiness would lead to change of surface air temperature, which would lead to change of cloudiness, etc. That is, cloudiness and surface air temperature would endlessly change each other without external influence. Physical existence of cloud feedback would cause that climate would change endlessly and indefinitely by itself. Because this isn't true, there is no coupling between cloudiness and surface air temperature, that is, cloud feedback doesn't exist physically. Number 5. Heuristic cloud feedback makes solutions of IPCC's climate models indefinite. The necessary demand of a valid climate model is that it determines uniquely the thermostatic and dynamic state of the atmosphere, that is, numbers of chemical compounds, momentum and energy of gas, droplets and particles everywhere in the atmosphere. These quantities are the function of climate models, including global cloudiness and surface air temperature, and the quantities of initial and boundary conditions are their only valid arguments. Changes of initial and boundary conditions change both cloudiness and surface air temperature, hence they have causal correlation, but they are not arguments of each other. Cloud feedback makes IPCC's climate models indefinite, therefore cloud feedback can be calculated only for imaginary climates. By choices of the imaginary climates, whatever values of climate feedback and accordingly Whatever global warmings for the same increase of carbon dioxide concentration can be obtained. This is shown by IPCC's senseless warming estimates 
which vary between 2 and 5 degrees Celsius. In IPCC's climate models, influence of carbon dioxide increase on mean temperature of the ground isn't determined by carbon dioxide increase, but by heuristic cloud feedback, which doesn't exist physically. Number 6. All molecules have a statistical mean area, perpendicular to direction of radiation, from which molecules emit, absorb and reflect radiation. These areas are functions of thermostatic state and frequency. Radiation area of compound per volume of medium is product of radiation area and number density of the molecules. Total linear radiation coefficient of medium is sum of linear radiation coefficients of all molecules of all entities of the medium. Clouds influence on atmospheric radiation only by increasing total linear radiation coefficients of the atmosphere. Clouds have only instant causal influence on global mean radiation to the ground, which is unique function of instant cloudiness of the whole atmosphere. It is an unfathomable error of IPCC's climate models that instant radiation to the ground is function of cloudiness of other atmospheres, like an imaginary clear sky atmosphere. Number 7. In standard language by cloudiness is understood, the local overhead cloudiness, which is described quantitatively by amount liquid water per unit area of the ground. The authors call this cloudiness as surface cloudiness, which is integral of volume density of liquid water over the meaningful height of the atmosphere. The authors call the volume density as volume cloudiness. Because local instant albedo of atmosphere is non-linear function of volume cloudiness, local instant surface cloudiness doesn't determine local instant albedo. Accordingly, the global long-time mean surface cloudiness of the ground, not to mention the perfectly indefinite mean percentage of cloudy sky, doesn't determine the long-time mean albedo of the atmosphere. It is determined uniquely by global volume cloudiness. Number 8. As explained in Chapter Error 6, Nonlinear reflection coefficient of the atmosphere increases when volume cloudiness increases, whereupon albedo of clouds can't decrease when volume cloudiness increases. When the influence of clouds is calculated according to the theory of radiative transfer, it is observed that when the global mean temperature of the ground increases, the increase in global volume cloudiness resists strongly increase of the temperature, and the opposite. Clouds resist strongly all changes of the mean temperature of the ground. Errors 6, 7 and 8 prove that makers of IPCC climate models don't understand radiative transfer. So, what should we think of this? First of all, I think that rebuttals to claims like these should be published. When hardcore scientists challenge paradigms with insights, they shouldn't be overlooked. And we know for a fact that modeling clouds has been too big of a challenge for the climate models, and so they bear an uncertainty just like Sarkoma and Ruattu points out. How or what the best solution for that uncertainty is, well, that will be a result of discussion between sciences. So with that in mind, I hope that by sharing this report it gets the attention it needs, and thereby a full review by experts. Links of the report and other documents are in the description. Thanks for watching and don't forget to forward the message.